Nigeria has been losing billions per year from this abandoned industry. This same industry can employ thousands of our youths, improve the economy, lead to more peace and security across the nation, and also bring more development to our communities. But because it has been neglected for many years, with all our focus on the oil and gas sector in the Niger Delta, we lose billions of dollars while other countries make a fortune from it. This is a very important theme and contains relevant information to help boost the nation's economy. This thing was opened in 1955 okay. by the Europeans. A day can produce 10 drums or 50 drums. Eh? And those are big drums though. Yeah, those are big drums. They employ a lot of people. We don't experience thief mm. in our community. Mm. We don't experience, but as the thing stopped, thief started to disturb us. Mm. The giant of Africa, Nigeria, has depended on proceeds from the oil and gas sector in the Niger Delta for decades ever since its discovery in 1956. So much that according to Nera metrics, crude oil, natural gases and other petroleum gases accounted for roughly 90% of Nigeria's total exports in the second quarter of 2022. Also, in 2021, the International Trade Administration made a report stating that crude oil contributed approximately 85% of export earnings and around 50% of total government revenues that year. You need to understand why Nigeria invests so much in this natural resource. Of course, it is because it generates a lot of revenue and there is still a great demand for it globally. And everything seems to be working fine now, but have you ever heard about the European Green Deal? The European Green Deal approved in 2020 is a set of policy initiatives by the European Commission with the aim of making the European Union climate neutral in 2050. It is focused on the promise to make Europe a net zero emitter of greenhouse gases by 2050. The European Climate Law was passed which legislated that greenhouse gas emissions should be 55% lower in 2030 compared to 1990. I want Europe to become the first climate neutral continent in the world by 2050. And with the oil and gas sector contributing a large percentage to the greenhouse gas emissions globally, countries dependent on this industry will be severely affected, especially developing countries. And we can notice that many countries are already transitioning to renewable energy and increasing climate change awareness. If you know economics and the law of demand and supply, it says that if the supply of goods or services exceeds demand, the price will fall and vice versa. Many countries understand how the climate change laws and awareness will affect them, which is one of the reasons behind the steady increase in investments in industries like tourism, tech, transportation and renewable energy. Nigeria has great potential in these industries like tech, as we can see many youths now investing and creating businesses in the tech field, giving birth to companies like Flutterwave, Move, Andela and many others. But today, I want to focus this documentary on an industry that has existed long before crude oil was discovered in Nigeria the palm oil industry, an industry that has been neglected and abandoned by our government but still contributing a lot to the lives of the local people who are still into it. An industry that was valued at above $60 billion in 2022 and is estimated to be over $80 billion by 2030. The oil palm tree produces high quality oil used primarily for cooking in developing countries. It is also used in food products, detergents, cosmetics and to a small extent biofuel. Palm oil is a small ingredient in the US diet, but more than half of all packaged products Americans consume contain palm oil. It is found in lipsticks, soaps, detergents, and even ice cream. And the global production and demand for palm oil is increasing rapidly. This just shows how valuable the industry is globally. Let us take a look at Indonesia and Malaysia, the two leading countries producing about 85% of the world's palm oil. In 2019, Indonesia produced 42.5 million tons, which is 58% of global production, while 19 million tons came from Malaysia, 26% of the global supply. Other major palm oil producers include Thailand, Colombia, and Nigeria, though all the three of them produced less than 3 million tons that year. In 2012, the Malaysian palm oil industry employed an estimated 491,000 workers and according to the CBP, Malaysia accounted for 31%, roughly 410 million US dollars of the United States palm oil imports during the 2020 fiscal year. This is a lot of jobs created and revenue generated just from one industry well invested in. Currently, Nigeria occupies the fifth position in the league of palm oil producing countries with 1.5% of the world's total output according to the United States Department of Agriculture. 
Bear in mind that Nigeria was once the world's largest palm oil producer but was overthrown by Malaysia and Indonesia in 1966. The country is now a net importer depending largely on other countries to meet the huge supply gap over the years. Currently, Nigeria is the largest consumer of the produce in the continent, consuming approximately 2.5 million metric tons yearly, while domestic production stands at less than 1.3 million metric tons, leaving a deficit of over 1.2 million metric tons, which explains why we still import the commodity till this day. And though there are new laws in place to improve the industry in Nigeria, the growth rate is very slow and we hope it gets better over time with more attention given to this industry. For my research about this industry, I traveled to two communities in Bayosa State, Ayama and Agbara community, to talk with the locals and learn from them about the importance of this industry. We were able to visit an abandoned palm oil refinery at Ayama community, which dates back to 1955. The elder said it was built by the British and later handed over to the Nigerian government. I learned that there are many palm oil refineries like this abandoned for many years across the Niger Delta region and that Bayosa State has at least three of them still abandoned till now. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel so we can be the community together of more wonderful people like you. It helps me grow the channel and helps me to reach more people with this Niger Daughter Stories. Thank you so much. Hey guys, it's Kisanda out here again and this is Niger Daughter Stories. So we are currently in Ayama community. I think this is Ogbea local government area. Oh yeah, yes. local government area. So we came to where the um, oil mill, this abandoned oil mill, it has been abandoned for many years. And I'm currently with our um, chief, um, Philip Ikise, and so I thank you so much for your time. Okay. We're going to be asking Chief Ikise um, some information about this place so that he can tell us about this um, industry, how long it has been, how functional it was, you know, the value to the people of the community, and we'll just learn more from him about this place. This place was opened in 1955 okay. by the Europeans. Okay, the white men. The white men. Mm. And before the white men, we opened this place. They proclaim along the Anyama Jew mm. for each community to brought their own palm for okay. testing. Okay. That is, before they will set, they will test the way they, the, the, best way oil. the best oil. Okay. So when the communities along the Anyama June brought their own, it is here that you get the best uh, oil, oil producer. That is, that is why they build this oil mill. To Ayama okay. community here, oh. that 1955. Oh. That is how the Europeans started to use the place. The place was boom. It was boom in that time. That they were doing time, business. Doing business. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we say people used to come and buy oil in drums. Like how many drums are buy per day? Then they can buy 20 drums per day. Uh -huh. Depends on the pound that uh, the oil mill people have. Okay. Because to produce uh, oil here, uh, a day can produce 10 drums or 50 drums. Uh. And those are big drums though. Yeah, those big drums. Mm. Pool, we call it pool. Okay. Maybe this uh, small drum. Okay. Yeah, they get fireman, engineer, and other workers. workers. And they have a lot of workers. Wow. They work in different places. Mm -hmm. In a uh, Ayama community here. Yeah. That's a lot of employment. Lot of employment. That means if this place was functioning, there'll be a lot of jobs though. Yes, now. A lot of jobs. And if you the same way oil mill produce soap. 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 For washing. For washing. Buffing. Eh? This man came and there uh, came and opened this place. We don't experience thief mm. in our community. Mm. Don't experience. But as the thing stopped, thief started to disturb us. Mm. They are they are thiefing our palms, plantains. Mm. Eh, because of no job. Because of no job. No job for them. Yeah. This is an industry that can provide thousands of jobs. Yes, now. But people are still doing from oil now. At least they are only two. It's way. not. It, it cannot use the hand and uh, compare to machine. Go, uh, go now, so we are still telling the Nigerian government oh. and the Bayasa government, mostly mm. the Bayasa government, to turn and look at Syria because this is very important. Mm -hmm. Like imagine yeah. how much is being lost. Last year, I directed and produced a documentary film with my brother Chop Films titled Mama Palm Oil. It is a short film that shows the importance of the palm oil industry to the local people and the nation at large. You can watch the complete film on my channel through the link in the description. The business is good. And this business don't help me for life. Since that day until today. If I tell you what I don't carry this business though. They train my children. I don't take big house. 
I don't put them for hand work. One is sewing, these are sewing medicine. One is working for POP. If you see this boy, for this POP. Even now, people that is laughing me that time. Now, now, whole of our place as a whole, everybody is here. Now, this business, because this business is helping many families. From my countless hours of research and conversations with the locals of these communities, I learned a lot about the value of this industry which I have tried sharing in this documentary. And though there are negatives in this industry just like every other, things like deforestation which destroys the ecosystem of many endangered species, making them go extinct are part of the problems this industry has caused globally. I suggest that if Nigeria is to invest in this industry properly, we must find sustainable ways to make it grow that does not lead to more problems but brings about more development for our people. With the Niger Delta Stories project, we will continue to tell more beautiful stories about our land, people and culture and show the world that there is so much more in our land than crude oil. And in 5-10 to 10 years, we will reshape the negative narrative the world has about our region. Thank you so much for watching and stay wonderful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Also check this playlist here to watch more interesting videos and see you on the next video. Thank you so much for supporting. <laughs>